This is the Mike Garrigan Podcast. Welcome to episode 21 of 26 for the year 2014. My name is Mike Garrigan, and this is the Mike Garrigan Podcast. My guest today is one of the most sought-after vocalists in the EDM community. She sang on Sultan and Ned Shepard's successful single, Walls, and she has recently released her first solo album called Beautiful Hybrid. Welcome to the show, Quilla. Thank how are you, you for having me. I'm well, how are you, Mike? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to have you on the show. I know we work Thank together you. a lot here um, at, right at this desk, actually, when, when, when we uh, we work on your stuff. But uh, you've done an album recently. And uh, what can you tell us about Beautiful Hybrid? Well, um, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we actually recorded quite a bit of the album here in this studio. Uh, Mike is the one who mixed and mastered the whole record um, and recorded a lot of the vocals as well and some of the instrumentals. Um, So the album Beautiful Hybrid is um, a hybrid because it has a lot of different genres. Each song is kind of its own little journey. And um, you've got pop, we've got some bluesy stuff and then some dance music and some other electronic explorations and a lot of uh, vocal experiments and different touching upon uh, different styles and also languages too. Most of it's in English, but there is a song in French. Um, So yeah, it's kind of, it's a synthesis of all the different kinds of music that I like. (laughs) I think having been, you know, someone who's worked on it and mixed it and recorded a lot of it, that's a really good description of it. it's not necessarily something that's all over the place in a bad way. It is focused because it's your voice, but it, I think it shows a, a variety of your influences. Um, so why did you record this album? Um, well, it's an album that represents the last uh, quite last few years of uh, music that I've been writing. So I've been wanting to finish it for a long time, for many years. Mm. So I have thought about it a lot. It was something that represents like a whole huge chapter in my life, I guess, that I just wanted to, you know, get that music out there and be like, hey, like, (laughs) here's a representation of things that I've been doing. So I've I've had a lot of, uh, I've had a lot of different kinds of inspiration. Each song is... um, its own little world. Um, it, it has its own message and themes and and ins- inspirations behind it. And it's it's something that I wanted to to give to the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It takes when I listen to the album in the order that you you picked for it. It takes me on this in this journey. It's a real real journey of, of a record where you start with you know biological clock. It's this. Um, it's almost like a, an intro piece more than an mm-hmm. actual song. It's kind of short, and then it kicks in and, and gives you some different different tracks. Um, the, the three songs I wanted to, to talk about sure. on the show today are um, A Million Broken Bicycles. Broken mm-hmm. Bikes? Or a bike, Million bike? Broken Bikes. A Million <laughs> Broken Bikes, uh, which which features a lot of the programming and, and really excellent uh, EDM production, I think. And then Exploding Galaxies, which I think it highlights some of your um, composition skills. Mm-hmm. It does some really cool things with modulation. Oh, and then <laughs> uh, the song Beans, which <laughs> it, it's a fun song, uh, but it also highlights your, your vocal ability and, and sort of the acapella sensibility that you have that you can do outside of being in front of a Thank DJ you. or a band. It's just a, real, a great record. So, um, But yeah, what can you tell us about uh, A Million Broken Bikes? What inspired that song? Um, a Million Broken Bikes, initially the song... Well, I was inspired by when I went to Burning Man, which mm-hmm. is a festival in Nevada. I went for a few years. Um, and the first year I went, I think it was the first year, there was a gigantic sculpture made of like thousands of bicycles. It was an archway. Wow. And someone had literally welded them all together and mounted them into the, this very large um, gateway. And, mm-hmm. and it was like a space that you'd go through and, and then you get to the main like cafe camp where there's people hanging out in this big dome. And so I remember seeing that and I was like, oh, it's, it's like a million broken bicycles. And so I had that imagery in my head for um, quite a while. And then I got inspired by different acapella pieces that I heard, um, like choir-based mm. songs. And I was in a choir at the time in Montreal. It was called the Maha Choir. Uh, it's still going on. It's been going on for almost 20 years now. And um, we explored a lot of interesting 
pieces like by Bjork and Imo- Imogen Heap and tons of other, even um, some medieval stuff like Hildegard von Bingen. We did mm. all kinds of arrangements for a women's choir. So I always wanted to do that. I wanted to have something with like many vocal layers to it. And I didn't want to have, I didn't want to have the lyrics be something so straightforward. I, I want it to be a little cryptic too. And I got inspired by a, there is a poem called, um, I think it's called A Million Nightingales wow. in my tree, in the branches of my trees. Mm-hmm. And I, it's by a Palestinian poet. I can't remember his name right now. Uh, but it has some imagery like that where there's these millions of nightingales and mm-hmm. they're in the branches. I think they're in the branches of his heart. Uh-huh. Yeah. And and I heard uh, that piece. It was adapted by a women's choir in New York. And it, the melodies are very different and the content of the lyrics is is quite different. But I, I got inspired by that because I was doing a lot of like vocal loop performances at the time. And so I started, you know, bringing in this imagery of a million this, a million that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I used to have, I had all kinds of creatures in that song at one point and went through many, many, many permutations. I had squirrels, I had uh-huh. sea lions, I had <laughs> unicorns, I had like, you name it. It was in the song, bats, vampires. like <laughs> what. And then I eventually, I mean, I also have like dozens of different recordings of the song and Mm -hmm. then it was only um when i met uh my co-producer josh davis on that track that i was like hey you know what actually i really need someone to help me work on the instrumental background for the song because i had all the lyrics and i had the structure but it was lacking in the the melodies and the arrangement and i wanted there to be a drop like a, a melodic drop in the middle of the song where people kind of dance and everything so he helped me produce that so we worked yeah. on that together and that really added a lot to the song it it took it more from like a acapella poetry idea to mm-hmm. to really like a, a dance song yeah i've enjoyed i enjoyed josh's uh, production on that and mm-hmm. uh, it was really fun to mix and the thing i i'm becoming coming to appreciate about edm is it has this sensibility of of sounding simple. Mm-hmm. But when as a composer or producer, one mm-hmm. sits down to try to pull <laughs> yeah. that stuff off, it's very difficult. Yeah. There's a subtlety to it. And I think that's the art form. Yeah. It's, it's, it's conveying, uh, I guess, that rhythm. And most of these songs we find are at 128 for some reason. 128 BPM, <laughs> that's the ticket. <laughs> there's some, some sort of visceral thing that happens at that. But at the same time, there, it's very difficult. It's not as easy as I think people in the rock community think mm-hmm. it is. And, and, and you know, I, I have a vast, a vastly larger appreciation for it since you've brought the work in. So, right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting that you mm-hmm. brought that up, actually. Mm-hmm. So this, this song, A Million Broken Bikes, is a perfect example of, like, it's supposed to be EDM, but it's not, like, what you'd call pure right. progressive house or mm-hmm. deep house or, or uh, trance or any of these subgenres of EDM. It's, like, it's our own spin on it. It's inspired mm-hmm. by rock and indie pop, and it has this drop in the middle of it so that people can dance. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Josh and I are both, like, beginner producers in EDM so we just did what felt <laughs> good mm-hmm. for the song yeah. and we don't necessarily we didn't necessarily you know create a hundred layers for the song like some of these EDM productions <laughs> that you see there's like a hundred stems and you're like wow yeah. like, <laughs> that was insane you know oh yeah yeah I'm, I'm, so I'm... we we just did our own take mm-hmm. on EDM and uh you know people ask me oh like what kind of what style of music is this I'm like it's pop music you know it's electronic pop it's our own take on it it's fun mm-hmm. you know it's, it's it's a little bit silly mm-hmm. um, um, it's it's like uh, it has different uh, you know counter melodies and melodies and fun parts and a strong beat you know mm-hmm. that that attracts people and uh, yeah so we had a lot of fun <laughs> working I, on that song. I know there's some I guess sophisticated dividing lines in the EDM community about what is a certain kind of song, but for me, who's yeah. someone who's an outsider to the genre, mm-hmm. when I listen to your record, it sounds like a, a singer songwriter album that's heavily influenced by by electronic and EDM. So in that way, it it works for me as a listener, as someone who likes someone like Joni Mitchell or or any variety of of male uh, singer-songwriter. Just Mm -hmm. it happens to be electronic. So it's just really good. That's so (laughs) great. Mike, thank you for saying that. It's really good. I hadn't thought of it that way, that it's a Mm -hmm. songwriter's album influenced by dance music. But that that is what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good way of like describing it. (laughs) Wait, in in the song Million Broken Bikes, there's a a lyric that I I had to ask you about and, and... 
what is a tar sand? Oh, yes. <laughs> tar sand. <laughs> there are tar sands in that song. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, tar sands, uh, that was a lyric I added more recently uh -huh. within the last year to that song. So the tar sands are this place in Canada, in Alberta. Mm -hmm. Canada is where I'm from. And we have basically what looks like Mordor from space, <laughs> like, you know, from the Lord of the Rings. Um, that's what it looks like. It's basically a huge blemish on our country, and you could see it from space. It's um, uh, an, an extractive area where they're taking this, I think in English you call it bituminous oil, mm. bitumen. Anyways, mm. it's like a type of oil that's really full of sand, so that when they extract it, it comes out all like gross, and they have to refine it and everything. So there's all these tailing ponds and all these tar sands where the oil comes out, and they have to they. I don't know what what's going on with the production behind it, but it's like basically leaves these huge like cesspools of like toxic waste, wow. and it's huge. It's like the size of Florida or something like that. So that's the tar sands. You can you can Google it and you'll see like these horrible mm -hmm. pictures. And the unfortunate part of the tar sands is that um, the water they try to like encase these toxic pools, these mm -hmm. these ponds, but it's been seeping into the water system like through the ground. I kind of like fracking, but you know it's a different process, and it's been it's been contaminating the water system. So it's been affecting the First Nations communities who live out there. Mm -hmm. um, Fort Chipewyan, I think, is the place that's closest by that's affected by it. So it's it's a huge issue in Canada, and it's a, it's an I for me it's like a hot button, not just political, but also like a moral dilemma that we have as human beings in the 21st century, which is, you know, we all want to have more economic growth and sustainability and good career options for people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously money circulating, people want to make a living and, and do well. And that's something that's very important for all of us. But at what cost to yeah. the planet and mm -hmm. what cost to our communities and our water and everything. So that's that line, that part of the song um talks about that and in general the talk the song is a little bit about the environment and the contaminants in it but it's supposed to be microcosm versus macrocosm of like the inner landscape of our bodies versus like the wow. pollution of the larger ecosystem yeah. it's both mm -hmm. so that's why it's saying i have a million broken bikes mm -hmm. in um the alleyways of my heart that's mm -hmm. like you know your interior arteries getting <laughs> <Wow>. clogged up <laughs> mm -hmm. getting clogged up with um you know, fats and cholesterols mm -hmm. and toxins and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's the symbolism of the, you know, health crisis that people have. And then also the larger, like, pollution mm -hmm. of the world. Yeah. <laughs> do you, I mean, do you feel yeah, like... It's both. Do you view the song Million Broken, Broken Bikes the, and in a larger sense, uh, Beautiful Hybrid and, and Who Quilla is in even larger sense, as a way to uh, be an activist uh, for things you believe in? Or do you do you feel like... That's something that you would rather imply through the music. Um, I guess it's a tough question to mm -hmm. answer because, like, I don't see the line between being an activist and not being an activist. It's more like I see it as like, here are my thoughts, here's what I'm going through in my brain, and here is what I want to express. Mm -hmm. And some of those would be considered activist topics, but to me, it's all aspects of like. Um, human psychology that people are trying to deal with, you know, whether it's like loss or regret or pain or health problems or economic problems or choices in career or choices in, you know, having children or not, or like, what are you going to do with your daily life? You're going to get out of bed and what kind of activities do you do? Like, I, I don't see it as like just activist struggles, but more like very human choices that we make yeah. that that point to like deeper philosophical problems mm -hmm. that we encounter, you know, as human beings. So some of it, um, some of it explores these like, you know, raise your fist in the air, like mm -hmm. activist topics, like kind of call to arms sort of thing or call to revolution or yeah. symbolic call to arms or, you know, call to peace or whatnot. But for me, it's more than that. It's more than it's more than just like a rallying cry. It's more like uh, I, I try to put in messages so that people, it, maybe, maybe I hope the music would help them, uh, would help the listeners process emotions that they might be going through. Mm -hmm. And I try to put that in my EDM tracks too. Yeah, I can tell yeah. with that too, especially. Yeah. Um, you write really good hooks that um, they're just great to stick with you, you know. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting because as, as a, someone who's a, a, a songwriter and performer myself, I feel like for me, you know, I 
I've never really tried to be activist with my music, and it mm-hmm. just, it's a place I've never felt comfortable going overtly. Yeah. Um, but and I think the way we carry ourselves and the types of shows we play and the kinds mm. of, of songs we write say a lot about what we do believe for in. Sure. So, for sure, you know, I think for it, sure. I think music is the loudest voice, uh, f- but, you know, the kinds of festivals we play say a lot, too. That's true, yeah, yeah the venues we play and the people we hang out with. Mm-hmm. I guess, like, I think people... In, in the society, like, draw a line between, okay, is this a social justice event or is this just, like, a fun, you know, entertainment event? But for me, it's, like, not that different. Mm-hmm. It's more like, yeah, sometimes it'll be more on, like, the social justice side of things. And I, I love community organizing. And I a lot of the work I do outside of music is related to community organizing and yeah. uh, trying to advance, like, certain themes or, you know. But at the same time, like, I'm more interested on the micro level, like, mm-hmm. how how people are affected by... I don't know, anything from women's rights to economic downturns to, you know, anything, sugar intake, like Mm -hmm. all of these things, like (laughs) to me are just aspects of like the same, the same human condition that we're going through right now on Mm -hmm. earth. So, so yeah, all of, to me, it's like all interrelated and music to me is like the perfect way to like explore these themes and messages. Yeah. And maybe it's not as accessible pop as I hoped, <laughs> but maybe one day. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I mean, yeah, it's it. Yeah, I don't. I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> I don't know. It just like is what it is. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I, I do like the idea of exploring ideas through music, and it, it's it's a safe place to do it. But I think also once it's exposed and people kind of know what it's about, it can be mm-hmm. can be different. You know, it can be very uh, not dangerous, but it could expose a lot about who we are as artists and. Um, yeah. I don't have an example of that. I'll think of one. <laughs> um, but anyway, the, the song we're talking about is Million Broken uh, Bikes. Why don't we check it out? <laughs> 